I could have strong words of condemnation by the UN Secretary General against the heinous acts by Palestinian armed groups and anyone who partook in the killing and brutalization of Israeli civilians on the 7th of October. And in the same breath, I condemn the violence sustained by rage and fury that Israel has unleashed against the, the entire people of Gaza. Uh, they are all being punished for what Hamas and probably others have done, and this is unlawful. The unrelenting bombardment of Gaza by Israeli forces um, have killed already 5, 000, an estimate of 5,700 people, 40% of whom are children. Do we realize what is going on? 15,000 are seriously injured. 1.6 million people are displaced. There is no water, no food, no electricity, no medicines. The trauma and destruction is unspeakable, and inferno that the Gaza people are in right now is a stain on all of us, on all UN member states, especially those who have the power to stop it and do not do it. Hamas militants indiscriminate attacks against civilians in Israel, killing 1,400 and injuring many more and the taking of hostages. These are war crimes and must be accounted for. And so is Israeli killing of over 5,700 people amidst an intensified siege of Gaza, depriving the population of life-sustaining supplies. This has become a tool of war, exposing the population to inescapable risks of death. Well, these are also war crimes, and my amount to crimes against humanity, because this is what international starvation is in uh, international humanitarian law. These, also is, have to, these crimes also have to be accounted for. Nothing can justify the, the deliberate toll inflicted on civilians, both Israelis and Palestinians, that we have been witnessing. And considering the abyss we are descending into, and we might still have the power to save ourselves and to save the Palestinians and Israelis from, it is imperative to comprehend how we got to October 7 and the horrors that unfolded since then. As the United Nations Secretary General said yesterday, the 7th of October did not happen in a vacuum, but in the context of uh, 56 years of suffocating occupation Israel has imposed on the Palestinian people. This occupation is unlawful under international law because it has served as a vehicle to violate international law because the building of colonies, confiscating land and, uh, and brutalizing um, the Palestinian population is a war crime in and of itself. What led to the current crisis? Nothing of this should be, of course, read as condoning or justifying the murders, murderous acts against Israeli civilians. My report focused on the impact of Israeli settler colonial occupation on generations of children in the occupied Palestinian territory and what remains of their right to live in safe safety and dignity beyond mere, mere survival. I've looked at the figures of the Palestinian children killed, injured, maimed, orphaned, made homeless, deprived of school and any opportunity to enjoy life amidst violence, a constant indignities and humiliation. And I've described this experience as unchilding. The expression is not mine, comes from uh, um, a scholar, Nadira Shahub Keborkian, who has described unchilding as that experience of depriving the child of the lightness of childhood, burdening the children with the responsibilities that no child should bear, responsibility, responsibilities and pain. Palestinian, children, uh, Palestinian children's lives are punctuated by eruptive and structural violence in segregated spaces and hostility-stricken communities. The family's livelihood, access to employment, health care, opportunities for leisure, future prospects and mobility are all controlled, restricted, and often negated by the Israeli occupation. Palestinian children are aware of the challenges they face as Palestinians, and they ask, why it's so? Are we less human? Are we less worthy? And we need to remember a statement by an Israeli occupation lieutenant who asserted last May that the number of Palestinian children incidentally killed during operations aimed at eliminating terrorists is irrelevant. Portraying Palestinian children and their parents are, as terrorists and human shields is very frequent in Israeli rhetoric. But this is only used to justify the, the indiscriminate killing, and it, it's extremely dehumanizing. And unfortunately, it's being amplified in Western discourse. I do think that the political process has failed 
for many reasons. And I keep on saying, the taking of land, because while the peace process was ongoing, Israel was continuing to build colonies. I mean, they have uh, grown in the hundreds since the peace process. How can they ever be uh, admissible and conducive to the realization of an independent Palestinian state? Uh, because each colony is, is epitomizes violence in and of itself. So I've heard this argument over and over, and I have really very little to comment on the political process itself. But I have always said the freedom of, of anyone should be a precondition for negotiation. And the continuous violation that, uh, that Israel has, um, has been allowed to live with, and again, the construction of the colonies is the most prominent for me. It has, it has gone on and on for, for decades, including while Israel and the Palestinians were negotiating. So I understand that uh, you seem to put the blame on the Palestinians for having refused to accept the situation, but how can a peace process even be even considered um, credible when there is no basic respect for human life and the possibility to, 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 to live as a collective in a given territory? And again, for me, the colonization of the occupied territory is the, is the most striking example, which is of apocalyptic dim dimensions in, the, in Jerusalem. Shouldn't a ceasefire be declared immediately to stop all this? Because I understand pursuing a, a legitimate goal could be to ensure Israel's security, could be dismantling the military capacity of Hamas. But what Israel is doing is not that. What Israel is doing is punishing an entire Palestinian population for what Hamas has done. This is not self-defense, surely not under international law. And again, the humanitarian aid that I've desperately, in, that I'm desperately invoking for would be supervised by the United Nations. Why can't the multilateral system have a role to play in this situation?